Hi, my name is Linda Doves, and this is my daughter, Ashley, Ashley. Doves. And we are going to present Cooking at Pinehurst. Um, we did this show a while ago, and we've had so many people want to see it over and over again that we decided to go ahead and try our hand at it another time. It's been over 15 years, so yeah. Why not? We'll put it this way. It was on VHS tape? Yes. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so uh, we, we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> Um, today we're going to do something that is super easy. Most of the recipes we do are always super easy. We don't talk to you in technical terms. Uh, we try to do it that anybody, just the, the average cook in the house can get the, to follow any of these recipes. Um, we're doing a banana nut crumb muffin. Now, we're doing enough for 20 to 24 muffins, depending on how this scoops out. You may say, I don't need 20 or 24 muffins. So you take the, the uh, recipe and you divide it in half. But once you taste it, you'll be glad you made the extra because they freeze fantastically. You can put some in the freezer and pull it out as you need it. But it's a great, great muffin and it's really easy to do. First thing we're going to talk about is bananas. Now, most people would see this banana and say, oh, it's on its way out. Actually, it's not. Actually, it's just about the perfect brightness. But there are people that will throw this away if it doesn't look bright yellow. Now look at this one. See this banana? And for sure people would want to throw this out. This is soft, but it's not mushy. And it's um, the kind of banana you want to use in banana bread and banana muffins and banana cake too, come to think of it. Mm -hmm. banana if you pancakes, have pancakes, yeah, banana banana pancakes. pancakes. If you have um, bananas that go bad quickly. And bananas are weird. You can have some that last for two weeks and you can have some that last for two days. So instead of throwing these things away, what I do is I will take the bananas, cut them up, and put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. You can also store your bananas in the refrigerator. If you store the bananas in the refrigerator, you're going to wind up with a um, dark skin like this, but there's nothing wrong with the banana. Put them in the um, freezer, they'll break down, but that's okay because this uh, recipe calls for mashed bananas anyway. This one has five bananas in it, so what we're going to do is we're going to mash up this one into that so that it'll be six because this calls for six bananas. And like I said, when it looks like this, there's nothing wrong with this banana. When it looks like this, there's nothing wrong with this banana. You just wouldn't want to eat it because it's too soft, but you can sure bake with it. Now, what we're going to do is, um, if you want to, actually, go ahead and add that one to that one. Um, you want this one? No, this one for the topping. Okay, she's going to have to mash that into oh. that. Wait, give me a, what do you want me to do with it? Get a middle hole. The dry ingredients that go into this is, and remember now, this is for a large amount of the uh, muffins, is three cups of all-purpose flour, it's two teaspoons of baking soda, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. Um, six bananas will go into this mix. And a cup of sugar, a cup of chopped nuts, and we've used walnuts. Um, we like the way walnuts are, but if, if you're a pecan fan, use the pecans. Two eggs beaten, which is right here, and two thirds of a cup of butter that's been melted, which is here. Do not put your butter in the microwave and melt it for a long period of time, because what it's going to do is it's going to blow up all over the microwave. So we usually do it in 10 to 15 second intervals, just until it gets to the point that it's melted. You want it melted, not lava. Right. Now, as you can see, Ashley's breaking up the rest of the um, banana over there. And once she gets that broken up, we're going to add this to the dry mix. So while she's doing that, I'm going to get the dry mix together. So here's the sugar. Here's the baking powder. Baking soda. And salt. Okay. These are the dry ingredients, and here go the nuts. This is the um, bananas that have been mixed up. So you want to take your dry ingredients and the nuts 
and stir them around. It's always good when you're adding nuts or raisins or any of those type of things to a dry mix to coat them a little bit because then they don't all uh, float to the top or float to the bottom. The uh, flour helps incorporate them to keep them kind of in the center of the thing. Now, what we're gonna do now is take the bananas, add the egg, which is two eggs that we've beaten up, and the butter. I'm gonna stir this together. And then you're gonna combine the two dry and wet ingredients together. Best way to do it is kind of fold it. What you can now do is mix this with a spoon or a spatula and you don't have to have a mixer, you don't have to have a lot of equipment to get these together. And go ahead and stir them and I'll get this stuff out with the butter right there. And I'll start working on the front topping. Okay, the crumb topping consists of brown sugar, two-thirds of a cup of brown sugar, a fourth, I mean, four tablespoons of flour, the all-purpose flour, a fourth of a teaspoon of the cinnamon, and two tablespoons of the butter. Now, this time you're not going to melt the butter. The other time you melt, melted the butter. This time you're not melting the butter. What you're doing is you've got to put it into the microwave or let it sit out room temperature. You've gotten it soft. All the other things have been incorporated into the bowl, and you want to get this softened butter in there. You can use a, a pastry blender, but most of the time it's just as easy to use your fingers. So what you're gonna do is go like this and just kind of wiggle your fingers around and get this butter worked into the flour and the brown sugar and the cinnamon mixture. You want it to kind of look like um, big, big crumbles. crumbles. Yeah. You don't want it to be real, real fine or anything, but then again, you don't want it gigantically huge either. Would you want like a consistency of crumb, like crumb cake topping? Yeah, well that's what it is basically. It's a crumb cake topping. And as you can <laughs> see, if you can see, oh, yeah. it's starting to get more and more and more incorporated into the uh, dry stuff. And the more it does it, the more it's gonna get crummy. Once you get this all together, what we're gonna do is, we already have some pans made up, and uh, we're gonna scoop it. We're gonna use, show them the cookie scooper. I mean the, uh, yeah. We're gonna use that size scooper because that's the size that you're gonna need for this size um, muffin pan. So it's like a medium scoop. It doesn't have a, a size written on it. It's okay. a cup. Okay, it's a half cup scoop. Um, if you want to use it and do smaller ones, you just use a smaller scooper. The thing that's nice about doing the scooper is the fact that you will get all of them to be pretty much the same size. It's kind of like portion control. Now, I've got this all mixed together. See how it is? It's crummy, but it's not huge lumps. And uh, this is, this is going to wind up going on top of it after we scoop these in. So now what we're doing is we're scooping these, this batter into the uh, muffin tins that have been lined with the paper cups. We have the oven being preheated. This is a convection oven. This is a commercial convection oven, so you never heat it quite quite as hot as you would your house oven. If you're cooking this at home, 50 degrees? Well, they say 25. It really depends on what it is. Like, if, if I'm baking a cake, I put it at 300 because I have more control when they moisture the cake. Um, where it would normally say 350, I would normally turn it down to 325, but we found that 300 works better. This one is uh, supposed to be baked at 375. So we have it set at 350. And 350 should work fine. Convection ovens. If you have a convection oven in your house and you're not used to working with a convection oven, you'll find that you have to turn the heat down and you have to do less time. So this thing calls for, I think, uh, 15 to 18 minutes. And I guess it just depends on your actual um, stove how long you're going to let it go but 15 or 18 minutes you just maybe set it for 15 and check it uh, when you haven't done a recipe before the best thing to do is to set it for a little lower you can always add time it's like salt you can always add salt to something but you can't take it out so the same thing with the, the timer it's better to set it low check on it and check on it every 
ten, every minute if you have to, if it doesn't look right. Now we're just gonna take a pinch of this crumb topping, put it on top. These are so good. We get them for a- They smell amazing. Yeah, we get them for a real estate meeting that we do every month for their breakfast. And um, there wasn't one left, it was so good. So this is, this is a really good recipe. With the holidays coming up, this would be a great thing to serve for a brunch or for a luncheon. Uh, you got Easter, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving, all that kind of stuff that you can utilize. This, this isn't one of these things where you have a uh, recipe and it's the kind of recipe that you can only use at Christmas. Yes. You could really use this any time. Now, this says it does 20 to 24, and right now we're getting 22-ish. You could probably take a little bit out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I may have over portion some. She's doing a Dove's portion. <laughs> Dove's is like Texas. So go big or go home, right? Yeah. yeah. We have a we have a new member of the family that just came. He's only eight months old and he's 23 pounds and 30 inches long. So we definitely go big. <laughs> and I can't wait till he can start eating this kind of stuff. The sister like a little pixie compared to him. Okay, so we got 20 three out of this, we probably could have gotten 24 if she had just not gone crazy on some of them. Scale back a little. You want to do that too? Here? And show them what the topping looks like on top. Remember, you have to make sure that you leave enough that every one of them gets some topping. You can always go back. It's like deviled eggs. You can always go back and put more on one, but it's hard to take it off once you've done it. So, welcome back, and here we go. This has been our muffins. We had to leave it in for about 18 minutes, wasn't it? I believe so. Yeah, it was around 18 minutes. It would have been fine at 16. It just felt like it needed a little bit longer. Um, they all turned out fine. They didn't lean because we put them on a, um, one of the shelves that has a tendency not to pull it towards it. And um, we got 24, 23 muffins out of this. 23 muffins. I screwed up. Yeah. And we've got a piece here that we can eat. It smells so good. It is. Mm. It's good. It is good? Mm hmm But if you were to put a little bit of the um, softened butter on top of it, it would be ridiculous. It's much lower calorie without the butter. <laughs> but I already put them as they have a pound of butter in it. What we're going to do is we're going to go over real quick what we told you. Don't throw your bananas away. Once they start getting dark, put them in the refrigerator or put them in bags and stick them in the freezer. And right on the bag, how many bananas are in there so that when you have um, a thing, you have three of them in there or six of them in there and you don't have to wonder how many was in the bag. Um, don't throw them away once they get soft, unless they're really, really... But if you pick them up and your fingers go through it, then they're past the point of no return. But um, you can use them for these banana muffins. We have a banana bread recipe. We have banana cake recipe. There's a lot of different things that you can use bananas in, and bananas are good for you. So, this is going to wrap it up for this week, and thanks for cooking at Pinehurst. Thank Tune you for in. joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And you like what you see hit that little subscribe button and you'll be sure to catch the next video that we put out right because we can only get better this is just our first one true story <laughs> first one this year yeah, yeah in a very long time in a very long time bye bye